What you have in this brigade are soldiers who know how to think, not what to think. They've adapted to the new way we fight. Young squad leaders, staff sergeants, who are responsible for the lives of eight other men, who understand how to use their initiative within the commander's intent. They understand the impact of their actions at the tactical, operation, and strategic level. This has been a phenomenal milestone in our Army's history because a group of soldiers took a theory, an unproven concept, and took it to combat and did exceptionally well. They accomplished the mission in every way, shape, and form. We went through a lot of different uh, possible missions uh, just coming to Iraq. Originally, we were supposed to be going to Fallujah. Uh, then we were going to Kirkuk. Uh, eventually ended up in Samarra, Baghdad, and then focused on the Syrian border, and now focused here in the city of Mosul. So we've had a variety of different missions. I think that in and of itself and the successes that we've had in whatever mission is a tribute to a soldiers' adaptability and agility. And I think that that is kind of a common theme that's seen throughout the brigade. Adaptability, flexibility, and most of all, speed. We have the ability to move more infantry faster and farther and have moved them faster and farther than anywhere in the history of warfare. There is a shared understanding when you've served together as long as these guys have served together under the conditions, physical, mental, spiritual, that you grow closer to each other and sometimes you even do to members of your family. You begin to look at these guys uh, as truly your brothers. It's about the guy on your left and right. We were able to bring a fight to the enemy uh, in his backyard instead of our backyard absolutely made the difference to the millions of Americans on our home soil. Absolutely made a great difference. I, and I thank them for their sacrifice. If you look over the last three years, we have been doing literally nothing but training and focusing on our mission, whether it's in a training environment or it's in a combat environment. And so you've got soldiers that are hardened from uh, really three straight years worth of hard work doing their job each and every day. And, and there's a tremendous amount of pride uh, that goes along with being that capable. And naturally, the first big fight we had was Samara, and going in there, and after Samara had had all, all the trouble uh, over the previous month or so, uh, pretty rapidly securing the town and, and turning it uh, back over to, to the unit whose battle space it was in. We bring two counterfire radars with the howitzers. Uh, those were employed in Samara, where we did conduct counterfire operations successfully. They didn't always get to do what they wanted to do perhaps throwing 155 millimeter shells down range. But what they did enabled the brigade to do so much more, and they should be very proud of that. We transfer responsibility for the Mosul area of operations from the 2nd Brigade, 101st Airborne Division, to the 3rd Brigade, 2nd Infantry Division, the Arrowhead Striker Brigade. Uh, to see the, the, just the daily sacrifice that our soldiers make uh, in this kind of situation is humbling, uh, it's, it's inspiring in, in, in how well they perform. Uh, and it's, you know, after, after a year of this, um, it, you, truly, uh, you truly love your soldiers. I'm very proud of, of what they've accomplished and who they've become. Uh, with regard to my soldiers that are not striker equipped, um, they have proven that the U.S. soldier, given the resources, the time, the training, the tools, can do any mission. This brigade replaced an entire division and with fewer resources and in my mind in an economy of force role this brigade has absolutely excelled at uh, continuing to bring uh, success to this area of operations in northern Iraq. soldiers have done a great job taking care of each other. So I think the real, the real accomplishment here is that they've, that these future 
sergeants and sergeant majors and lieutenant colonels and, and colonels for the Army, because that's what they're going to grow up and become. Uh, they're going to be so good in the future of our Army because of the things they've learned here and how they can take care of each other uh, in this type of environment and accomplish the mission. It's not about the vehicle specifically. Uh, it, it's really about the concept and about the soldiers that make the concept a reality. When you look at the number of soldiers in this brigade that have re-enlisted because they believe in what they're doing, uh, recognizing that there's a good chance they'll come back here, there's a real desire to continue the mission and to finish it. The most dangerous thing about a striker is the fact that a nine-man infantry squad comes out the back. And that nine-man that nine -man infantry squad is exceptionally well-trained, exceptionally well-led, and also exceptionally equipped and uh, they can close with and destroy the enemy. Iraqi security forces that we've trained, from the Iraqi border forces uh, out west to the uh, police to the, the ING. I think you know, we've, we've flooded the, uh, the the streets with Iraqi security forces, trained and capable. And uh, you know, just recently, we've gotten another large supply of equipment, so that you know they're not only trained but equipped to t take over. The Iraqi National Guard is one of the key future organizations and institutions that will hopefully lead to the security of Iraq by Iraqis and uh, to have predicted that we would have been doing so much in producing the future Iraqi security forces was something I could have never predicted. Our blood is in the sand here and we've shed it willingly. Not for king and country, not for some idea, but for each other. And when it all comes down to it, sometimes you'll hear eulogies, epithets, and people who talk in terms that, you know, this was all for a higher ideal and a greater purpose. For some, that may be the case. But for your average soldier, you know, you can give him no greater honor than to say that he maneuvered and he fought and ultimately was killed for his brothers on his left and right. There may be another man who stands in their place in the ranks but no one will ever replace them. They will always be with us. It's pretty humbling to be in command of a bunch of heroes. And uh, that's, that's meant a lot to me. Um, I think that, that's the most important thing, is that we've made a difference. We've made a difference for the Iraqi people. And I think we've made a difference for the world uh, in the job, the tough, tough missions that we've done while we've been here in Iraq. When a unit deploys, it affects a lot of people. The families back home, it, it means a lot, uh, the encouragement that we've gotten from them and, and how they've really made uh, as great a sacrifice, if not more, as the soldiers that are fighting here. And, and it means a lot to know that uh, they're willing to do that. You've survived the war. Thank damn sure you survived the peace use your time wisely with those that you love. History will judge this experiment as being a success. It's been uh, an absolutely great experience for everybody associated with the brigade. The true stories of some of the things that happened there are, are yet to be told, but uh, you know, some very heroic actions on the part of, uh, of soldiers at all levels.